Welcome to today's edition of the Author's Corner, brought to you by KNEO 91.7 FM, The Word. This is Roberta Foster, and today I welcome Bob Lapine to Author's Corner. He has recently written the book, Build a Stronger Marriage, The Path to Oneness, which is published by New Growth Press, and he'll tell you more about how to find the book at the end of the program. Just a little bit about Bob. He serves as the teaching pastor at Redeemer Community Church in Little Rock, Arkansas and was the longtime co-host of Family Life Today. He speaks regularly at marriage conferences and pastors events and is the author of such books as Love Like You Mean It, The Heart of a Marriage That Honors God, The Christian Husband, and Build a Stronger Marriage. And he also has a blog, which we'll have him explain uh, as we get to the end of the program. But first, Bob, welcome to Author's Corner. It is so great to be with you. Thanks for the invitation. Nice to be here. So who did you write Build a Stronger Marriage for? Was it newlyweds or couples that have been married for a long time, or just who did you have in mind? I had in mind couples who are uh, kind of monitoring their marriage and would get to a point where they would say, you know, we could use a tune-up. And I think all of us go through phases in marriage where We would say that's true. Uh, Sometimes our marriages are on the mountaintops, and sometimes our marriages get in the ditch. But a lot of times we will have those seasons in a marriage where we are just, it's just kind of a blah season, and and nothing is dramatically wrong, but we could use a little Mm -hmm. tune-up. So I wanted to provide a, a guidebook, a workbook. This is 17 short chapters designed to help uh, any couple diagnose and begin to correct some of the little adjustments that can be made in a marriage that can take it from from uh, mediocre to great. Mm. And one of the things you have um, in each chapter is a section at the end that's called Practical Steps for Real Change. And I see in the introduction, it's commented that some people will skip over these, but you strongly encourage people to go through that process. And so what's to be accomplished by that? I think that's the heart of the book. I think each chapter is, if you think in volleyball terms, what I've done is try to set the ball at the top of the net so that as a husband and wife either get together to discuss some of these things or do the work on their own. As you interact with the questions, you can take what I've presented in the chapter and begin to apply it, uh, consider it for your own life and marriage, review past history, look at where where the issues are in your marriage. Yeah, honestly, there can be some chapters people will go through and go, you know, there's not an issue here for us, and, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But I think there'll be other chapters you'll come up on where you'll go, oh, okay, this this helps identify for us what has been an ongoing pattern that could use some adjusting. And rather than just reading and nodding your head, I want you to do a little homework. And so that's what each of these these sections at the end of the chapter are designed to do, to say, let's apply this now and figure out how this applies in your marriage relationship. And are you suggesting that it be done as a couple, or will it also benefit a marriage if only one spouse does it? You know, I think it's something that any individual can do, and I think there'll be some benefit for that. I think it's better if a couple will do it together. Honestly, I think the best approach for this would be if two couples get together, maybe a Mm. mentor couple and a younger couple, and if they would go through it together, and the younger couple then could have the benefit of having an older mentor couple, um, maybe even a counselor or a pastor, who could take you through mm-hmm. each of these chapters and begin to interact with you and share with you from their own experience uh, how these issues have impacted them. I, I've been meeting regularly with a couple from our church who contacted me uh, back three or four months ago and said, you know, our, our marriage... We're just in one of those spots where mm-hmm. where we're stuck and we need some help. And so we've been going through the book together, and I think the ha- having me there asking some questions and being able to apply this and talk about my marriage and issues in our marriage, I think that's helped make the book more practical and more uh, more actionable for the couples who are going through it. Well, one of the things that I found interesting and in describing the purpose of the book is that you wrote that there are couples who have never brought the gospel into their marriage. So what exactly do you mean by that? 
Yeah, I, here, here's what I mean. I, I, have, I have told our congregation for years that I, I think we have to every day re-believe the gospel. Mm-hmm. And, and that doesn't mean we get re-saved. It just means that the promises of the gospel are this. God has promised that when we turn to Christ, when we follow him, our sins are forgiven. He is at work making us into new people, and we have a hope and a future that we didn't have before. Mm. And so I think in a marriage relationship, when we get stuck, we need to remember our sins have been forgiven. God has applied grace to our sins because we've messed up in marriage, and we just need to know that while we may experience the guilt of that, Mm -hmm. the shame has been taken away, Mm -hmm. and we we can rest in that. And then secondly, God is at work in us. He who began a good work is faithful to complete it, and he is changing us more and more into the image of his Son. So who we are today, we're we're not stuck in where we are today. We can be new people, new creations. We can live more and more like Christ going forward. And then we have a hope and a future. The the, the promise of the gospel is that beyond this life, uh, there there is hope for us. And I think to keep that in mind and live with eternity in mind, it makes it makes a, a difference. So I want people to apply those truths, those realities to the circumstances that they're experiencing in marriage or in life. And remember, what, however I've messed up, God has promised that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, whoever I am today, that's not who I'm stuck being. There can be real change in my life. I can be a, a better person, a person more like Christ. And then I have a future that gives me hope and encouragement and joy, and I can look forward to that day. Well, we'll get to a few specific um, points of discussion in the book in just a moment. Let me remind you that we're talking with Bob Lapine regarding the book Build a Stronger Marriage, The Path to Oneness. It's published by New Growth Press, and you're listening to Author's Corner, and I'm Roberta Foster. So the word expectations comes up in your book in that sometimes we have greater expectations than is lived out in a marriage. (laughs) And so that's one that I'd like you to talk about and how you cover that in your book. Yeah, all of us had expectations yeah. when we got married, and, and we, we filled in the gaps, the things we didn't know about our spouse or about the future. We filled them in with the rosiest possible picture. Our mind, that's where our mind went. We just thought uh, life is going to get better and better and better, and the expectation is that these things are going to happen, and uh, I'm finally going to have happiness, and all of these things that that are, are, are not realistic. And so I think uh, oftentimes what happens in a marriage is people find themselves disappointed because their expectations were not met, and they look at their spouse and go, you must be the wrong person because my expectations mm. weren't met. And instead we need to say, wait, were my expectations realistic or valid in the first place? Mm-hmm. And so let's go back and challenge the, the reality of those expectations and see whether We need to adjust uh, our expectations and and recognize that if you thought, for example, that if you got married to your spouse, uh, he would always make you happy. (laughs) Well, that was an unrealistic expectation. Mm -hmm. So rather than blaming your spouse for not always making you happy, let's go back and say, yeah, I shouldn't have had that expectation in the first place. Yeah. Well, and another area that I found interesting that you cover in your book is there are actually four areas you indicate of our past that should be discussed with a future spouse because of how they may affect the marriage later on. Would you mind sharing those with us? Yeah, and I'll say this is not just talking about it with a future spouse, but I've talked to couples. I'll, I'll give you an example. One, one of the areas that I think you need to look at is uh, your, your family of origin and what you learned about relationships just by osmosis from being in the family you grew up in. So in your family, uh, when there was conflict in the family, maybe you shouted at each other, or Mm -hmm. maybe you got really silent with each other. Well, you learned as a child, that's what you do when you get mad at somebody. You stomp out of the room, or you throw something, or you just clam up and don't speak to the other person. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's good for us to recognize that there are those patterns that get brought in to a marriage. But I remember sitting with a couple one time, and She was expressing how frustrated she was with her husband and things that he would say to her. And she said to me, this is exactly how my brother used to act toward me, and it made me so mad. Mm. And I began to realize in talking to her, her frustration was less about her husband 
it was about some unresolved issues with her brother. Mm. And and she had never dealt with that. And so, for example, her brother used to say, you're, you're just stupid. And Ooh. then her husband would say things to her like, have you ever thought about doing this a different way? But what she heard, instead of the helpful uh, coaching, what she heard was her brother saying, you're just stupid, mm. again, in her husband's comment. So her conflict was being carried out with her husband, but really it could be traced back to some unresolved issues from the family of origin. So the four areas that I pick are our family of origin issues, and then any kind of traumatic experiences we went through uh, in our childhood, our teen years, even in our early 20s before we mm-hmm. got married. Uh, I talk about guilt and shame that we may carry into a marriage that's never been dealt with or resolved. And then I talk about some of the early uh, p- the patterns that develop in a marriage or early ways that we hurt one another that we never address because we're, we don't know how to address them. It's early in the marriage, and we just stuff them down. And some of those just stay stuffed down until they pop back up 15 or 20 years later. Mm. So if I'm sitting with a couple who's been married 10, 15, 20 years, I'll say, let's go back and examine those four areas and see if there's anything from the past that might be affecting your current relationship so that your conflict is about those things rather than about what's happening today. Mm. Well, as I look at the table of contents, there are so many wonderful um, titles that people might just jump right to when they open your book. Um, Some of them are called Overlook or Confront or The Unexpected Wounds, What Forgiveness Is and What It Isn't, and so many great things. But um, let's end with more encouragement. That is one thing that really does work to resolve uh, some issues in a marriage, isn't it, is when we encourage one another. It is. In fact, I think there are four habits that really go with couples who are thriving in a marriage relationship. One of those habits is enthusiastic encouragement. We are cheering one another on. We are uh, acknowledging where where the other person is winning in something. We're, we're verbalizing that. Rather than being people who critique and who pick at each other, mm-hmm. let's be people who say, you did a really good job with that. Mm-hmm. You're, you're really gifted at this. I, I think that kind of encouragement is very powerful. In addition, I'll just I'll touch on three other things. I think we need to be expressing our love generously, not stingily. Some of us are stingy when it comes to love. Hmm. We need to be generous in how we give love to one another, how we express love to one another. I I think we need to be uh, gracious, quick forgivers. Hmm. So we need to learn how to forgive one another when we offend each other. And then the last area is that we need to be focused together on our common commitments, our common convictions things that, that we are passionate about that are really the, the heartbeat of the marriage. We, we need to be on the same page about the things that really matter and pursue that that uh, unity in a marriage relationship. Mm. Couples who are doing those four things are couples whose marriages will really thrive. Well, there's so much good information provided through this book. It's called Build a Stronger Marriage, The Path to Oneness, and it's written by Bob Lapine. And so, um, Bob, this is actually part of a series called Ask the Christian Counselor. Uh, Tell us more about that and how people can find out about your book, Build a Stronger Marriage. Yeah, I love the series that uh, New Growth Press has put together. These are are short. We referred to them as booklets. They're not mini books, but they're not they're not huge books that mm-hmm. take a long time to read. Uh, my book is about a hundred pages long to go through, uh, but these booklets are are designed to uh, uh, to take couples into the issues that we face in life. So there are issues like anxiety or fears, or in my case, marriage. Uh, any variety of issues that you would think. It would sure be nice to sit down and talk to a counselor about these things. Mm. And these uh, these MIDI books, not many books, but MIDI books, these are, yeah. are designed to kind of help you address those issues and, and maybe get you over the hump. Um, so if, if there was something you thought, I, ch- I sure wish I could get a little counsel on these, that's what these books are designed to help. Great. And is there a way that people can find your book, uh, Build a Stronger Marriage? 
My book is available wherever books are sold. So if you go to Amazon or Christian Book or any of the online retailers, you can typically find them there. The publisher is New Growth Press, and you can go to their website and order directly from them. So one more time, Build a Stronger Marriage, The Path to Oneness by Bob Lapine, uh, published by New Growth Press. And Bob, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing tips on building a stronger marriage. Thank you, Roberta. It's been great to be with you. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. This is Roberta Foster on the Author's Corner. Join us again next time. <music>